<laughs> this happened in recent times, so excuse me if I sound confused and terrified while sharing. It was a warm Friday night and I couldn't sleep even after trying for an hour. I came out to the living room to watch something on Netflix. I live in a ground floor apartment. The big window behind the living room couch opened up towards the woods. But I watch enough scary stories so living alone near woods never bothered me so far. I didn't have air conditioning in my apartment so I switched on the ceiling fan and opened the windows for ventilation. I poured a bucket of nachos and mayonnaise dip before sitting for a scary Netflix movie. As I played a movie, the cool breeze from the forest touched my neck. I could hear the chorus of crickets. It has been almost an hour. I was completely grooving in the movie when I heard sounds of dry leaves rustling in the woods. I turned around and didn't see anyone. A big owl hooted in the branch nearby and I felt I am the only human being awake with these night creatures. I put a handful of nachos inside of my mouth and started munching on them ruthlessly. The movie I watched showed a deaf girl being alone in the house while an intruder breaks in. I know what you're thinking. Is she insane? No, I'm not. But as I said, I am used to watching scary movies late night. I am not a very sound sleeper. So I was eating and watching the movie when I heard a creepy cackle echoing in the forest. I immediately turned around. My eyes got fixated on the narrow path going into the woods. Don't know why. A few seconds went by, then the echoing laughter started to go loud. It took me a few seconds more to realize that the sound of laughter is coming close. Suddenly, I saw a man rushing to my house at full speed, wearing a trench coat and a baseball cap. He was of average height and a little overweight. Seeing him hovering towards my window like a crazy psycho, I got up from the couch. I threw the nacho tub on the floor and started to close the window, shaking in fear. The man was a few inches away when I slammed shut my windows. He stopped right there. Even though he was so close, I couldn't see his face. The baseball cap created a shadow on his face. All I could see was his rusty, dark lips. He stood there like a statue and then his mouth formed a crooked smile. I could see his rotten yellow teeth. Whoever he is, he doesn't seem like a nice guy. I understood that very clearly. My heart was beating like drums when the man said something moving his lips, but I couldn't hear anything. He was going on rambling something inaudible. Then he started to walk towards the left of my house and disappeared behind the walls. I always locked my doors and windows before going to bed, so I was relieved thinking that at least he can't get inside. I sat down and paused the movie. The entire house was in darkness. The light from the TV was my only source to look around. I wanted to go and switch on the lights, but fear of death grabbed my feet too tightly to move. I took a few deep breaths and then started to look for my phone. I must call 911 before anything more happens. I noticed my phone was on the floor, which I threw away while throwing the nachos in shock. And due to the heavy throw, the front screen was shattered into pieces. My cell phone is the only phone in the house. Realizing that I can't even call 911 made my heartbeat become even faster. I crouched down on the floor and prayed to God to make this man go away. I thought if I waited for some hours, it would be morning soon, and then I can go out and ask for help. I'm the only tenant in this small two-story apartment. The other tenants were supposed to come tomorrow. My friend Rita told me to stay with her tonight, but I didn't listen. Who thought I will start living Netflix content in real life, that too, in the middle of the night? I don't remember what time it was, but I slowly got up and played back the TV. I didn't want to give that guy any idea that he scared the hell out of me. The movie started to play again. Half an hour went by without any trouble. I thought to go to my room and try to contact 911 through my laptop. I walked into my room as quiet as possible. The laptop was right next to the study table near the window. I was about to pick it up when I heard a slow breathing sound outside my window. I opened the curtain and that creepy man was standing there, pressing his entire face on the window and staring right into my soul. <laughs> Let me in. His voice gave my bones chills and I screamed at the top of my lungs. I ran to the living room and collapsed on the floor crying heavily. The man's laughter got louder hearing me sob and he started to bang on the glass window screaming. Let me in, let me in, 
Let me in! But before he could finish his words, I heard a female voice in the passage outside of my apartment. Dad! Dad, where are you? I sprung in joy thinking the neighbors upstairs may have finally arrived. I ran to the main door and opened it. A girl younger than me, probably in her high school years, stood outside my apartment with a confused face. I said in a sobbing voice, There's a man trying to break in. My phone is not working. Please call the cops. What? Relax, relax. Where is he? Show me. In my bedroom. He's standing outside of my window. The girl went straight to my room, and what she did next almost gave me a heart attack. She opened the bedroom window and helped that man get inside my apartment. I screamed in fear. Are you two going to kill me now? What? No. This is my dad, for God's sake. Not some fugitive. He suffers from some delusion. I, I am sorry you had to meet us like this. We are your next door neighbors. He likes watching Netflix all day, but all our furniture is arriving tomorrow. Somehow, he got out of the apartment and was wandering outside. Maybe he saw you watching TV, so he came here. I apologize for all the inconvenience. She looked at her dad with a really embarrassing face, and the man stared at my TV without saying anything more. He wasn't even noticing either of us. His eyes were stuck to the screen. I understood this girl was telling the truth. She then took her father away. While walking out of my apartment, her father went on staring at the screen. Just before disappearing in the passage outside, his eyes shifted towards me and he gave me one last crooked smile and said something inaudible that somehow felt like he was saying, I'll be back. I left the place the next day and since then, never met that girl or her psycho father. I am very sure the man is putting on a show an act of mental illness to hide his evil self in front of his innocent daughter. So, if you live on the outskirts of Minnesota, then don't open your windows at night. <laughs> hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. I woke up with a smile on my face. The sky seemed lovely. Everything seemed beautiful after a long time. While brushing my teeth, I stopped and gazed at my wardrobe, looking for the perfect outfit tonight. After a bad breakup and five emotionally draining months, I finally have a date. Among all my dresses, the black one caught my eye. I took it out and hung it near the mirror to give it a nice press later. After freshening up, I went to the kitchen to make breakfast. I live alone in this studio apartment. My parents live in New Jersey and I moved out last year. The guy I dated was my neighbor's son and a total ass. But Jason is not like him. He is different. It has only been a week since I have met Jason. I was shopping for groceries in Walmart when our trolleys stumbled upon each other. Our eyes met, and we couldn't help but smile. There was something in his stare that imprinted his face in my mind immediately. We exchanged some casual talks, and he even helped me carry my bags to the car. Then, he went on his way, and I drove home, wondering how strikingly handsome he is. Three days after this incident, I was going to work when I heard a familiar voice behind me. Turning back, I saw it was Jason. He was driving a black truck and slowed down to talk to me. He said he too was going to work the same way and would like to drop me off. Without any hesitation, I hopped in and now here we are, meeting tonight for our first dinner date. Jason is very punctual and unlike other guys, he never keeps me waiting. So I finished my breakfast and started preparing myself for date night. I was thinking about what show to wear when my phone rang. Hi mom, what's up? Someone's in a good mood. What's the occasion? <laughs> um, nothing. Did you meet someone? What? No. Why would you? Kiara, I am your mom. I know you too well. Tell me about him. There's nothing to tell yet. We are going on our first date tonight. He is nice and well-behaved. That's good to hear. So, 
Is it going to be just the date? Mom? Okay, okay. No more interference in your private matter. You are a big girl now. Just be careful. And if you guys do it, then don't forget to use protection. Ah, Mom, please. I have to go now. I'll, I'll call you later. <laughs> have a nice night. Bye, little birdie. Even though I yelled at her for thinking too far ahead of time, the same thing was going in my mind as well. I took a deep breath and said to myself, looking in the mirror, stop worrying so much. Everything will be all right. The entire afternoon went by dressing myself and doing my makeup. When I finally got ready, wearing my beautiful black dress, paired with matching black heels, I blushed, seeing myself in the mirror. I sprayed perfume, and just when, a car horn honked under my apartment. I rushed to the window and saw Jason had arrived right on time. I rushed down, and he came out to open the door for me. You look like an angel. Thank you. I sat beside him and thought about getting a kiss before heading to the restaurant. But Jason smiled and started to drive. It has come to my notice that Jason is not a very touchy guy, and it actually is fine with me. Not everyone is comfortable with public displays of affection. We went to the Ocean Grill and sat on a corner table that allowed us perfect privacy. I am glad that we are spending time together. <laughs> me too. I talked about my childhood and high school boyfriends, and for the first time in life, I found a guy who actually listened. Jason never interrupted me or showed irritation as I rambled about myself. I loved how carefully he listened and how he even showed interest in my life, asking follow-up questions like, where do my parents live? How long have I been living on my own here? Do I know many people in this neighborhood? How often do I see my family, etc.? I also told him how I rarely talk to people at work and I have always been the quiet type. He smiled with his shining eyes and said, well, now you know me. For the first time, he kept his hand on mine and a warm feeling made my heart skip a beat. After dinner, we got into his car and Jason said, would you like to go to my place and hang out for a while? We can watch something on Netflix while having a couple of beers. I was bracing myself for this invitation, so I paused a while and said, um, okay. I may be a quiet girl, but I was smart enough to understand what this Netflix and chill idea stands for these days. Actually, there was no reason to say no because Jason is quite handsome and well off. If things go perfectly, then we have a long shot together. We left the highway and got onto a dusty road. On one side, I could see vast fields and on the other, deep woods. I had no idea you lived on the outskirts. Yeah, my grandpa used to live here. Now, this is my place. After driving for 15 minutes more, we reached a wooden house. Even though it looked old and rusty from the outside, it appeared to be very cozy and warm from the inside. I was surprised to see how well decorated and clean the house was. Generally, you don't expect to see a bachelor's place in such good condition. But Jason was so particular in every little detail. A strong smell of room freshener was churning in the air. I understood Jason had planned to bring me to his place after dinner long back. He sat me down on the living room couch and turned on the big flat screen. The red logo of Netflix beamed the room with its usual sound, and a screen full of contents flashed in front of my eyes. Taking a look at the suggestions, I found out Jason prefers crime thrillers a lot. I was surfing through the movies when he came back holding two beers in his hand. What do you want to watch? Saying this, he handed me a beer and I replied, It seems you have a keen interest in crime thrillers. He laughed mysteriously and said, <laughs> What's the fun if there's no thrill in life? I smiled and took a sip from the beer. He suggested watching the web series named You, about a guy whose stalking behavior makes him do the unthinkable. The web series started and Jason turned off the lights in the living room. My heart beat got faster sitting in that empty house with him. After five minutes like this, he came close to me and said, Would it be wrong if I kiss you, Kiara? I smiled and looked at his eyes, saying, No. He kissed me on the lips, and I kissed him back. As we started to hit it off, Jason stopped and said, I need to go to the washroom. Wait here. I'll be back soon. 
He went to the washroom and I got excited thinking, finally, the time is here. A minute went by, 10 minutes went by. I waited and waited, but Jason didn't come back. Thinking how weird it is, I got up and walked to the washroom. I was about to knock on the washroom door when I saw thick red liquid coming out from the gap under the door. I pushed the door open and saw Jason was lying on the floor, covered in blood with an injury on the back of his head. It wasn't hard to guess that somehow he slipped and hit his head. I ran towards him as he coughed blood while shaking. His eyes stared at me wildly and then he started to choke in his own blood. Oh my God, I will get something. Wait, Jason. I ran to get a first aid kit, dialing the paramedics. I saw a room right next to the washroom. I opened the door and got in. I was about to press the call button when I looked around. What is this place? Chains were hanging from the ceiling with the various torture devices tied to them. There were bamboo sticks, cuffs, and a big black table with sharp needles sticking on the surface. This room is only designed for torture. A camera was set up in the corner, probably to record a snuff film. I didn't call and went to check the camera. There was footage in its memory. One by one, I played those videos. Jason torturing girls in this room. So this is what his Netflix and chill date is. Bringing innocent girls into his house in the name of watching movies on Netflix and then putting them through hell. Has he killed these girls too? My body got numb. I came to a psycho's house being his victim, but now he is lying injured in his own washroom. I thanked God for letting me live and slowly walked back into the washroom. Jason was still lying there and coughing blood. I stooped down to his face and said, did you torture and kill girls here? Help, help me. Not before you answer that question. I'm sorry, but I swear I wasn't planning to do that with you. Suddenly, I don't know why I felt like believing him. Maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he actually fell in love with me. I helped him to get up and brought him to the living room couch. His head was still bleeding like crazy. I ripped off part of my cloth and put it on his head. Then I called paramedics and I took him to a hospital. Jason received stitches and half of his body got paralyzed with his injury. A week later, I brought him back to this house, but this time he sat in a wheelchair. I took him to that room of torture where I have to build a cage to keep him. He was not in his senses when I locked him inside that cage. One day, he might wake from this drowsy state of mind, making me realize it was all a lie that I was too brought as a victim into this house. But if that happens, I am not letting him go behind other women. Taking my inspiration from the web series of Netflix, I will keep him locked up in that room forever. And I'm sure he will eventually fall in love with me. <laughs> the slang Netflix and chill has become really popular in the recent years. And while the true meaning of the slang is known to most people, I was unlucky enough to meet someone who had a twisted definition of the popular slang, Netflix and chill. My name is Nolan Hunter, and I was 17 years old when this incident happened. I was living with my brother, Landon Hunter, at the time, and he had just become a certified self-defense instructor. Seeing as it was his job, my brother was very passionate about being safe and knowing how to properly protect yourself. As with every chance he got, he was always trying to show me defensive techniques to use if I was ever in trouble. He'd say things like, it's really dangerous out there. It's important to know how to protect yourself. You should always be safe out there because you never know when you'll find yourself in a dangerous situation. While I knew he had my best interests at heart, I really didn't care about my safety because at 17, all I really thought about were girls. Like every other teenager, once my hormones kicked in, the only thing I could think about was scoring a hot date. And on the 7th of October, 2019, I finally got lucky. I had asked around and people told me that she was a goth girl who was majorly into things of the occult. While I wasn't into that kind of stuff, I told myself she wasn't bad looking. 
So when she walked up to me and asked me if I wanted to come over for a Netflix and chill day, I immediately jumped at the opportunity. That night, I got ready for the date, and before I left, I told my elder brother where I was going so he wouldn't be worried. When I was done, he looked at me and said, I don't know, man. It's pretty late. You should really tread carefully and stay safe. I then replied him with, Bro, I'm going on a Netflix and chill date with a girl. Nothing dangerous is going to happen. Believe me, there's nothing to worry about. After that, I made my way to the door. As I left the house, I realized it was cold outside, so I went back to get a jacket. I couldn't see mine on the coat rack, and I was already running a bit late, so I just took my brother's jacket instead. I quickly made my way to Catherine's house, and once I got there, we began to talk and have a good time. As we sat down to watch Netflix, I suggested a really good show that I had seen in the past. Catherine looked at me and said, I know something that's even better to watch. Curious, I asked, what's the show called? And she replied to me with, you'll see. I watched her pick up the remote as she continued the conversation with, have you ever heard of Netflix secret codes? I replied her with, yeah, I have. As I watched her type in the code 0666. Before I could blink, numerous horrific videos immediately filled the screen. Catherine then calmly played one called Chronicles of the Occult, and I began to watch morbidly graphic videos of people being sacrificed in cult rituals. I watched in horror as numerous helpless people were propped up before strange altars. Their throats were slit and their eyes were gouged out. I had no words as I watched this ghastly horror play out before me. I slowly turned to my right to see Catherine smiling from ear to ear as she watched the morbid images. And it didn't take me long to figure out that she was really enjoying this. After the first 10 minutes, I couldn't take it anymore. So I turned to her and said, what the hell is this? Catherine then calmly replied to me with, it's my favorite show and you're about to be part of it. Baffled, I said, what the hell does that mean? Before I could finish my sentence, two hooded figures emerged from the dark and attacked me. I tried to struggle, but it was no use as they firmly held on to me. They started to subdue me when I shouted, what the hell is going on here, Catherine? Who are these people? She smiled and replied to me with, you see, Nolan, the Chronicles of the Occult is a show that's made up of numerous occult eccentrics. I myself am a very huge contributor to the content shown, and today I need a sacrificial lamb to kill in my latest entry. And I thought to myself, there's no better candidate than a horny boy who would jump at the opportunity of Netflix and chill. So I invited you here under the guise of that, and now I'm going to make you a star by killing you. I watched as she spoke with so much confidence. The sight was sickening to me, as in that moment, I had lost all appeal towards the girl standing before me, as she looked truly psychotic. With no hesitation, the men started to pull me towards a room. I kept struggling with all of my strength, but it was hopeless. They took me to a room that was decorated with occultist things. I saw the skulls of animals placed around the room. Black candles were placed and lit everywhere to give the room an eerie glow. A huge demonic altar was in the middle of the room. As they brought me closer, I could see numerous blood stains on it. They propped me up on the altar as I watched Catherine get out a camera and a jagged knife. The fear of dying slowly began to paralyze me. I looked at her with utter disgust as she said to me, Don't look at me like that, Nolan. I kept my promise, didn't I? We watched some Netflix, and now it's time for us to chill. But unfortunately for you, this is my twisted meaning of chill. <laughs> they all started to laugh as she continued to set up the camera. Seeing them laugh turned my fear to anger as I kept on struggling. I pulled and tugged until I suddenly felt something in my jacket's pocket. I took a closer look out of the corner of my eye. I realized there was a can of mace in my pocket. I knew the mace belonged to my brother as being a self-defense instructor, he carried it everywhere he went. I then remembered why I had it, as the jacket I was wearing belonged to him. 
Seeing that can of mace filled me with hope as it gave me an opportunity to escape. So with all of my strength, I managed to pull one of my arms free and in a split second, right before my throat was about to be slit, I grabbed the can of mace and sprayed it into the eyes of my attackers. Stunned, they all began to scream as the mace burnt their eyes. Not wasting a single second, I bolted to the door. I managed to make my way out of the apartment as I ran down the street. I didn't stop till I reached home. As I ran into the living room, I saw my elder brother Landon waiting for me with a worried look on his face. I was out of breath, but I managed to tell him everything that happened and he immediately called the police. The days that followed were hectic as a lot of questioning and interrogations were carried out. The cops who had gone to pay Catherine a visit told us that no one was there as there was no trace of her. The cops and I then decided to reach out to Netflix to see if they knew anything about the horrific program, Chronicles of the Occult. We called them up and explained everything that happened. The Netflix worker then told us, I'm sorry, but we know all our codes and we can assure you that the code 0666 has never existed. 